This is part one of a series of tutorials looking at using the program Scatter for processing, analysing, reducing solution X-ray scattering data, specifically biological scattering data. Okay, so the first thing that you'll need to do is download the Scatter application. Um, so if you open a web browser and navigate to this website here, bioisis.net, uh, you'll arrive at this page, click on Tutorial. Inside Tutorial, you'll see a link to Scatter Download, click on that, and then Download via Bioisis. When you click on that, you'll be prompted to log in, uh, create a account. It's freely available, but you do have to register for an account. Um, and then you'll be able to download the, uh, the JAR file. Now, it's a Java application, which means it's cross-platform, and it'll be the same JAR file that you download and run on any platform. Okay, um, one thing that you will need before you can run Scatter is a Java JDK. Your computer may well already have Java, in which case skip this next step and just try launching the, the JAR file. I'll show you how to do that in a minute. Uh, if you don't have Java, um, if you just Google for um, you know Java JDK, something like that, uh, you'll get a link to the Oracle website. Click on that um, uh, and you'll see something like this. You have to accept the license agreement um, and then just grab the, the Java that goes with your particular um, operating system. Um, that'll download and then you can install it. Uh, okay, um, so let's just imagine then that we have downloaded uh, Scatter. So here in my downloads folder I've got, I downloaded scatter.zip. I unzipped that just by double clicking. That gave me this Scatter jar file. Uh, inside there we've got scatter3.jar. Now I could launch Scatter just by double clicking here. Uh, most computers know what to do with a jar file and so they'll, they'll open that. Uh, another possibility is if you open a terminal window um, and then use this command here, java minus jar and then the path to your scatter3.jar file that will also launch Scatter. The advantage of doing it this way is that Scatter will output some log information into the terminal window, um, and that, that can be quite useful. Okay, uh, so that will, after a few seconds, that will open up Scatter, and here it is. Um, there's really just one, uh, a few settings that you have to, to do in Scatter before you can use it, um, and they're in the Settings tab. The first thing is there's a working directory setting. This is some of the, the the algorithms and processes that we'll look at later, output files and the working directory points to where you're going to write those out to. So if you set that to somewhere sensible you'll get your output files. The other thing that you could do, and this is purely optional, is there's a setting here pointing at your ATSAS installation. So ATSAS is a package of modeling tools distributed by the EMVL for scattering data. Um, there's really, the only thing that, that Scatter will use ATSAS for is there's a tab here for DAM in, DAM if. Uh, these are ATSAS programs for doing dummy atom modeling. Uh, if you don't point to your ATSAS installation, then this panel here won't work. Pretty much everything else in Scatter will work. Um, I think the only possible exception to that is when you're doing a P of R function, um, and again, we, we can talk more about that later, there's an option to, to output a dot .out file, um, and it uses NOM, which is a access program. So uh, those are really the only two things that won't work if you don't give it your access directory. So this is purely optional. You don't have to have access installed to make Scatter work. Okay, so having done these things, we're now ready to go ahead and uh, use Scatter to, to analyze some data.